Welcome to Carbon Fields. Everyone wants to modify their cars, but everyone doesn't know where to start. Today we'll be talking about where you should probably start modifying your car. By modifying your car, what you'd ideally want to achieve is to make it better than what it used to be. It could be performance-wise, appearance-wise, if you're a ricer boy, go slap a spoiler on it. Here is where you should probably start. Number one, wheels, and number two, tires. Now, wheels and tires can be modified separately, but I'm gonna talk about the two points together because they work hand in hand, just like the carbon fields. We work together, like a family. We love each other a lot. We're talking about beginner mods, so at this point, you need to keep in mind that the manufacturer specification is almost perfect for your car. You need to stay as close as possible to the original circumference of your wheels. If you're increasing your rim size by an inch or two, you need to reduce your tire wall to stay as close as possible to that original circumference. That's when the words low profile come into the scene. I'm sure you've heard of it already. You need to also keep in mind that a bigger wheel is a heavier wheel and it's going to add more load onto your engine. So your engine is going to have to work harder to spin those bigger wheels. And that can result in uh, loss of fuel efficiency and even a slight loss of power to the wheels. You can always use an online tire size calculator to find the perfect wheel size for your car. It's always, it always comes down to your make and model, so make sure you do your research. And remember, no replicas. Your wheels are your final gear, so your wheel size will affect your acceleration and your top speed. A smaller wheel will give you slightly better acceleration, whereas a bigger wheel will give you a little more top speed but it comes down to your engine's capabilities to spin these wheels. Wider wheels and tires will actually give you more traction through the corners, but you need to ask yourself if you actually need that extra traction. Because if you are a daily driver, I really don't think you need that extra traction because a wider contact area is again gonna add more load to your engine, which will again result in lower fuel efficiency and a slight loss in power. So keep all of these in mind when you go wheel and tire hunting. Number three, intake. Think of your engine as your respiratory system. Is it easy to breathe with a cloth covering your nose? No, it isn't. Factory air intake systems are generally quite restricted to keep cost, uh, intake noise, and emissions low. By upgrading your air filter with an aftermarket drop-in air filter or your air intake system with a complete aftermarket intake system, you can actually make your engine's job a little easier. There is a lot of engineering that goes into designing an intake system. So slapping the fanciest pod filter onto a 3-inch stainless steel intake pipe is not going to get you any horsepower. You need to consider the filtration capabilities of the pod filter you're going to use or the drop-in air filter you're going to use. Most knockoff cheap replicas are just going to steal power and cause damage to your throttle body by not doing its job properly. Dust is going to get in and it's going to ruin your engine. So say no to replicas. You've probably heard of cold air intakes, ram air intakes, etc, etc. Honestly, unless tested on a dyno, I wouldn't buy any other claims made on the internet. There are different ways to modify your intake system. You need to do your research and find out which is best for your car. There are some cars that come with really efficient factory air intake systems like the Honda F20C. If you modify it, you're going to lose power. You're not going to gain anything. So make sure you do your research and find out which is best for your car. Fancy pod filters. No. Number four, exhaust systems. Just like your wheels and tires, your intake and your exhaust system work hand in hand. Just like me and my girlfriend, we're a cute couple, we work hand in hand. Anyways, when it comes to a stock car, what you should always think of is reducing the restrictions of your factory exhaust system. So we're not gonna talk about headers and larger piping here. We're gonna talk about reducing restrictions. So what you can do is you can opt for a freer flowing muffler free flowing catalytic converter or you can delete it altogether. You can look at your resonators, etc, etc. What you should always think of is making it easier for the exhaust to flow out of the engine. Headers, let's leave it, let's leave it aside. It's for another day because it's, it's complex because just like the intake systems, there's a lot of engineering again. And uh, I'm sure as beginners, you don't want to go through all of that. There are lots of aftermarket complete exhaust systems that you could buy and just bolt onto your car. It depends, it always comes down to your make and model. You can always look at an aftermarket system, a complete system that you can buy off the internet and slap on your car. Or if you know a thing or two about fabricating, you can always look at fabricating your own exhaust system. It's generally cheap, but that's what I do. You know, dodgy work. It's cheap and it gets the job done. I like, I like to just get the job done. Yeah. 
Number five, suspension. I've left suspension for the last because it's generally the most costly out of the list here. There are lots of ways you can modify your suspension. You can go all out and purchase a set of aftermarket coilovers, which will cost you a buck, but it'll give you a lot of adjustability. Or you can opt for a set of lowering springs or separate springs and aftermarket dampers. If you really want, you can go full on dodgy, sketchy work like me and cut your springs, lower heat it and compress it and cut your shocks and all sorts of that nasty, but it's not gonna last long. It's gonna ruin your car and you're gonna ride like, I don't know, it's gonna ride like a horse. It's gonna be like super stiff and you know, all of that. <laughs> Coilovers, the best for you if you are performance oriented, if you're all about dropping seconds off your lap times and riding relatively comfortably on the road, Coilovers are the best for you. There is a large variety of coilovers that you can choose from. You can get basic ones to really complicated, expensive ones with uh, external reservoirs and all of that, but that's complex and you don't really need to look into all of that because you're a beginner and just opt for a set of decent coilovers that will give you uh, adjustable damping and maybe the ride height. Lowering springs on the other hand will give you the look. Your car will be slightly lower and the handling will improve slightly but they don't generally work well with your stock dampers. So you ideally should look at aftermarket dampers as well, something that will work with the spring. The internet is your friend, always do your research. Search model wise, type in your make model and uh, you know the model year and all of that and I'm sure you'll be able to get yourself, get yourself an aftermarket set of coilovers or springs that will suit your car well. Big ups to Shana for lending us his shop space. If you need any suspension, tire, battery or steering related work done, check these guys out. They're not too far from the town. We're in Nigambo right now and big ups to you guys. Thanks for watching. All of this is for you. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments, you can post it in the comment section below. You can find us on Instagram at carbon underscore fields. DM us, follow us, like our content. If you have anything, any suggestions, hit us up. And if you haven't watched the video of the Nissan Primera, that's our shop car. That's our car, actually. It's Mitu's car, but you know, carbon fuels, but it is mine. If you haven't watched the video yet, click on the link. I'm sure we'll add the link to the video somewhere in, the, somewhere in this video. So watch that. Stay tuned. and how to start verifying your car. Hello, my lady. Hello, my honey. Hello, my lady. <laughs> Hello. But there are different ways you can modify your suspension. You can go full on dodgy like me and cut your springs off. Oh, in two strokes. I love two strokes though. Anyways. Okay. Like me, if you really want, you can cut your springs and heat them and compress them and all sorts of things, but that is not recommended because you're gonna your car is gonna ride like a horse <laughs> if that even makes sense. <laughs> Thanks for watching, honestly. I really appreciate it. All of you guys, I mean if you weren't here, we wouldn't be doing these videos. There's a lot of hard work that goes into these, and I really appreciate it. Anyways. That's best for your car. That's it on Carbon Fields, ladies and gentlemen. Big ups to Chanel for giving us his garage space. Big ups to Mitu Gamage. No big ups for him. That's the, it's, it's the Carbon Fields car. If you haven't watched the feature on that yet, uh, click on the link here or here. I don't know, wherever Freema is going to put it. Uh, yeah, that's a wrap.